This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got some big tests for college football playoff hopefuls coming up in week number nine, Oklahoma and Georgia, both going on the road, take on conference foes this week, big spreads in those games, but still difficult tests. We're going to preview those couple of games, break down whether Florida uh, or potentially Kansas could cover those large spreads and, you know, try to keep that game close against those college football playoff hopefuls and more to get you ready for week number nine. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as I am every Wednesday by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank and Ed. We spoke last Thursday when the the uh, Michigan sign stealing scandal first erupted and I was like, okay, you know, it's still pretty early in the process. Now, since then, we've gotten he's been getting tickets to 12 out of 13 Big Ten other schools. I don't want to know which one he was not getting tickets to because I think I know the answer. It'd probably make me pretty sad. It could be Rutgers, I guess, but you know, whatever. Um, I just don't want to know that answer. And he apparently has a 500 page manifesto that he was like developing about the Michigan football program. So like this has taken 15 weird turns since then. How are you doing today? I'm I'm doing pretty good. I'm pretty sure it was Rutgers that he didn't go to, Jim. So nothing nothing to worry about. Okay, nothing good. Nothing to worry about. Um, yeah, no, this is this is all kind of blown up and it, it's pretty interesting. I uh just it it gives gives me something nice to look at on uh Twitter every day. Uh I've concluded that you should not listen to anyone with uh allegiances to Michigan or Ohio State. Um and uh it's kind of interesting to get some takes from everyone else uh yeah. you know like i think the opinions are interesting um i think it's uh, a particularly interesting uh it, it, i mean it's a particularly interesting just because the rules are so strange in a yeah. sense um you know you can't it, there's a lot of things that you can't do in college football that you can do in high school and you you can do in the nfl in terms of like scouting opponents and stuff like that so that makes it kind of interesting and i don't know there, there's there's a lot to unpack and we'll, we'll see where we'll see where it all goes yeah it's definitely one of those where i'm gonna let this thing unfold before i have any definitive claims because it's had sixteen thousand turns already which means there are seventeen thousand more to come um and i'm curious where that will all go i agree with you where you kind of want to be careful about which sources you're putting a lot of stock in right now because a lot of people have different motivations which is you know interesting and i think that in general we could always go for some more um Par better parsing of the news in our judgment per from a judgment perspective so this might not be a bad thing in terms of you know making your own read on things interpreting things properly as you read certain news that comes across for sure i mean this is like that high school exercise about you know quality of sources on twitter yeah. on social yeah. media right this is like the final exam <laughs> <laughs> who can you trust about this topic um, and it's it's a lot harder now than it used to be to determine who's trustful and who's not. So thanks, Elon. That's been a, a true delight trying to figure out uh, which sources we should trust and which we should not. We're going to dive and talk some football here in a bit. We're going to talk about Ohio State coming off a big win against Penn State, kind of get a read on where they stand relative to Michigan and Georgia right now. We'll talk about uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, Georgia, Florida, and much more to get you ready for week number nine. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up later on today, Tom Vecchio will have a preview up, getting you ready for Thursday night with the Bills and the Bucks facing off for Thursday Night Football to get that as it is posted. Make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and these daily shows are also up on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 
Paramount Plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in massachusetts or call 1-877-8 hope and y or text open y in new york now ed this past week we did see ohio state get a big win over penn state in pretty impressive faction and now they're even money to make the college football playoff over at fanduel sportsbook so with that big win in their pocket against a pretty legitimate foe how do your numbers you ohio state compare to teams like georgia and michigan right now Right. I mean, I think my numbers weren't particularly impressed with that Ohio State win. Uh, Penn State's defense played really well. Um, they were able to, for the most part, keep the reps under uh, Ohio State. Um, you know, Ohio State didn't go over their team total, for example. So they were they were able to get enough points to win the game. Obviously, having a superstar like Marvin Harrison Jr., was very helpful because Penn State corners are really good and he was just simply better than them. Um, also, personally, like, uh, I think Drew Allar had just a bad game. I can't imagine that he's that bad all the time, missing open receivers like he was in the second half. Um, I think um, so. Uh, he, he's probably going to be better in the future, whether it's nerves, whether it's just a bad game. You know, like right now, I tweeted this out this morning. Like, you know, I would make Michigan uh, minus four and a half at home against Ohio State later. So I have Michigan a couple points better than Ohio State. So again, you know, the the numbers moved up on Ohio State a little bit because of the win, but not not by a ton. And then I would have Michigan uh, minus two and a half at Penn State. Um, I think the markets are going to be three or higher simply because uh, I think they're going to they're they're going to look at. How is Penn State going to score against a good Michigan defense? I, I'm not sure Michigan's defense is that great. And like I said, I think Alar just had a really bad game. So I think that is going to be a very competitive game on the road. So overall, um, you know, I my numbers are Michigan on top. And I think that's pretty legitimate based on the way they played the last five-ish or games. Ohio State second. Georgia's like a, just a tick behind them. So overall, a very competitive college football landscape. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see some competitive semifinal games. And, and um, yeah, I, I, I think everyone's kind of still there. So, um, yeah, well, I think, uh, I think it'll be a pretty competitive getting into the playoff and then some semifinal and maybe even a final game that's competitive. Yeah, and these next couple of weeks can be very telling uh, in the Big Ten and huge weeks coming up here for Michigan. As they have that Penn State game and, of course, Ohio State down the road as well. Currently, Michigan minus 185 to make yeah. the college football playoff, tied with Georgia for the shortest odds, followed by Florida State at minus 160, then Ohio State at, at even money. Hey, Jim, real quick. Game- what? Jim, real quick. Uh, I think Washington plus 115 is kind of yeah. interesting. Okay. You know, they really struggled. Uh, last week, uh, we're only able to put up what one offensive touchdown or something. It was yeah. probably an outlier game for a Michael Penix led offense that has been really good. Uh, you know, uh, my numbers downgraded Washington quite a bit, so that seems like pretty generous for them to. Um, uh, well, <laughs> that also probably has to be quite a bit of a downgrade that has to be reflective of a downgrade of USC. Washington is going to play later. Um, so I think there's a lot of stuff to kind of unpack out there out West as well. I can still see Oregon being the most likely team out there to come out, even though, you know, they, they weren't particularly great either against Washington state last week. Um, but Washington plus plus one fifteen looks pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, Parker Fleming, a uh, guy we've had on the show before does a thing called, do we really get beat that bad? And it kind of shows like 
the net success rate of teams yeah. that won. I believe Washington was like one of the worst. No, actually, they're not as bad as I thought. But um, but, but it was a rough game. expectations. What's that? Relative to expectations, they were terrible, right? Right. So that that's like, yes, their success rate relative to expectations was bad. And like they went from first to fifth in my success rate adjusted for opponent. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't a good week. You know, we'll see if yeah. it was an outlier. Uh, but I still think there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of good football. I think that's going to happen in the Pac-12. And I'm still really looking forward to all that. Starting with the game, we'll talk about it a little bit later. Yeah, so looking at uh, Parker's uh, Parker's uh, graph, you can find him on Twitter at Stats of War. Um, Washington was like below average in terms of net success rate, and two spots better than them was Ohio State. So backing up what you said, Ed, Ohio State's net success rate wasn't going to blow you away, uh, despite right. the way that, Penn State. So keep that in mind. Right, and that's all. You know, Penn State's defense was was in right. general good. Yeah, if their offense could have done anything. If they wouldn't have gotten that holding call on that fumble return for a touchdown, I thought the holding call was legit. Uh, but, you know, if they get any kind of break, uh, the perception of that game could be very different. For sure. And it's important to keep that in mind. The context of a win, not just the fact they won, even if it is a very good opponent. Let's dig in now to some games here for week number nine, beginning with Oklahoma going on the road to take on Kansas right now. Oklahoma is a 10-point favorite total in this game. It's 65 and a half. And Oklahoma's offense, Ed, I think we can expect to continue to be very good. But the defense now facing a Kansas team that is... Ben solid despite having Jason being a quarterback. Sounds like he'll be starting once again this week for Kansas. So let's start with the defense for Oklahoma. Can they do enough here to cover a pretty large spread on the road against a competent team? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough. I mean, they are 19th when I look at my adjusted success rate. So definitely a unit that is, uh, you know, on the rise compared to last year. Uh, we know Brent Venables is a defensive guy. So not too surprising that they're getting, uh, everything together on that side of the ball. When you look at this game, you know, by far the worst unit is going to be Kansas's defense. 91st in my adjusted success rate. They're pretty bad. Um, a little bit better in, in yards per play, 59th, but still for sure the worst unit that's going to be out there. Kansas's offense looks like it's going to continue to roll. I, uh, I didn't actually realize like Jason Bean started the first game of the season. I didn't realize Jalen Daniels didn't play that game. So it's kind of been a back and forth with, well, not really a back and forth, but I mean, he played before, so it wasn't easy for me to just be like, oh, let me take the first four games and see how right. Kansas' offense was with and without Bean. I think we can kind of safely assume that they're they're going to be pretty good. Um, I mean, that's certainly the data that we're getting. You know, my numbers have uh, Oklahoma by eight. I'm not seeing a ton of value here. I guess I would kind of lean slightly towards Kansas, but um, I'm not seeing a ton of value in this game. Yeah, the plus 10 on Kansas is minus 115 right now. So you mentioned it's a two, two points of value there for you. And you have to account for the fact that it is minus 115 as well. It's on a key number. So I think accounting for that, it makes sense why that might not be super alluring for you there. And I think we talked about Oklahoma before where uh, Bill Connolly was writing pieces last year about how SP Plus is having a hard time catching up to how bad they were. And it is Whoa. a quick turnaround though, right? To get to this point where the defense is suddenly like trustworthy. So I guess like, I'm still pretty skeptical of them. And I think that's why I I think that I'm on board with you, where if you were to go a certain way in this game, it'd be Kansas. I think it's a stay away as well. But like, I still have my reservations about this defense, just given how rough things were last year. And given that it's still not right. really like a full, full Venables team, because it's so early, early in his tenure still. Right. I think, well, last year is interesting, right? Because I think the numbers on Oklahoma were a lot better than their record. 0-5 oh, and, and one score games, and I'm looking at my numbers. They were 53rd and adjusted success rate. Heading into the season, you know, I think Bill was actually saying that, you know, it might be another year before Brent Venables gets everything together here. I think an improvement to 19th on defense is pretty good. Maybe that's uh, more than we expect from this unit, but, you know, they're undefeated right now, right? Yeah. So, they, you know, they um, they should win this game. Yeah, whether you think they're going to cover or not, and uh, they're they're definitely a contender to to make it all the way to the college football playoff. 
And they've beaten some tough teams, too, and that does matter as well. So Oklahoma minus 10 against Kansas. No value there based on what Ed's model is saying. Let's talk now about Georgia. Going on the road take on Florida. Right now, this spread is 14.5 with the total at 47.5 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And this is the first game we've seen uh, Georgia play without Brock Bowers. It's a large spread at 14.5, and and it's a game with a low total. So really tough set of circumstances here. Can Florida keep this game close enough to cover a more than two touchdown spread. Right. I mean, Florida is a really tough team to figure out. And especially on defense where they're actually a very good 15th in my adjusted success rate and a really awful 102nd in adjusted yards for play. They've had a huge problem with explosive plays that tends to be random. But when I see a yards per play, that's as bad as 102nd, you know, I think that gives, uh, that, that gives me pause about whether this defense can do anything. When you look at Georgia's offense, they're they're fine. They're borderline top 10. When you look at success rate or, or yards per play, obviously it hurts to not have Brock Bowers, uh, who, you know, who had about more than three yards per route run this year. That's excellent, especially for a tight end. And, you know, Lad McConkey's back, but 11 targets in three games. It, you know, it doesn't seem like he is the player that he was last year for, for whatever reason. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think, you know, my numbers have this as uh, Georgia by about 13. I think when I look at Florida and I, and I look at those defensive numbers, it's impossible to figure out what is going on there. I think that defense could be okay to really awful. Um, so you know, Florida actually is decent on offense. Uh, I kind of would lean towards the over here. I think this this 47 is, is pretty low. Uh, my numbers have it at like 55. I, I think you can make a case for that because Florida's offense has been pretty good. Um, Georgia's defense has been kind of the weaker of the two sides of the football. They're 33rd in my adjusted success rate. They're 12th in adjusted yards per play. So, you know, let's it, let's not think that this is a bad defense we know that they recruit at a high level and there's going to be the athletes on that side of the ball but they certainly haven't gotten it done like they have over the, the previous two years so uh, i'm not sure not really sure you know my numbers like the over here and um i, I would lean that way okay right now over on 47 and a half is minus 110 at FanDuel sportsbook you mentioned bowers and his yards per route run which is insane for a tight end but also like he helps the running game too because he's he like they have like a lot of like jet sweeps to him and stuff like that. And so like he actually benefits in that regard too. But I think this number does account for that. And again, if you got the spread at 13, and I think it makes sense that you would show value in the over in, in, in this situation. So showing faith in the Florida offense, I think that makes sense. Over 47 and a half is minus 110. And I think that is a fun way to get exposure potentially to this game. Let's finish up here by talking about Oregon at Utah. Well, right now, Oregon is a six and a half point favorite. Total in this game is 47 and a half. And Utah announced last week that Cam Rising will not play at all this year, but still got a big win before that announcement uh, over USC. Six and a half point dogs at home against Oregon. How do you see this game playing out? Right. So this game was super interesting to kind of dig into my numbers. Uh, Certainly talked about Oregon a couple weeks ago about how their defense was a lot better than it had been last year after it came into the season as a question mark. You know, the defense, all things considered, was pretty good against Washington in that game. You know, they they gave up a reasonably high success rate, but Washington is the best offense in the nation. And they actually moved into my top 10 when I look at adjusted success rate. Then uh, I looked at it again before this game and they had dropped all the way to 26. I was like, ah, oh, well, they must've been terrible against Washington state. They, they weren't, they were, they were about college football average. Uh, what happened was that Washington had such a horrible game against Arizona state that it just brought everything down. Uh, you got to think that that Washington game was an outlier performance. Um, and that, you know, when they start to play well again, that, that, you know, Oregon's defense is probably better is, is, is at least the top 25 unit, if not a little bit higher. So when, you know, their uh, Oregon's offense is elite, so is Utah's defense. That's going to be definitely a battle of strengths there. Utah's uh, offense is not good. They're 76 when I look at my adjusted success rate. So, you know, um, you know, when I, I have Oregon by about five, you know, when I posted this, DK had uh, Oregon minus four. 
So maybe some interest there, but now obviously the market has moved since then. Uh, I think it's gone, it's gone right through my number. So not seeing a ton of value. I do expect Oregon to win this game. Uh, I think their defense will be able to hold Utah down. And uh, I think I, I still see Oregon as a Pac-12 favorite. Yeah, for sure. Now you mentioned your number is at five here and it's moved to six and a half, which means we've seen a lot of movement in favor of Oregon. How far would this such a move before you'd have interest in buying Utah? If we got to seven, would that entice you enough or no? I mean, it's tough, right? Because I yeah. really don't think that Utah offense is good, even though yeah. they were good enough to win a game against a USC defense that I don't think is quite as bad as people think it is. Although clearly it wasn't good enough to win. Um, yeah. I mean, they, I mean, Utah just doesn't really have a lot on offense. I mean, it's, such a shame that Cam Rising is not playing in a year where their defense is so elite right. and you wonder what this team could have done. Um, I, I don't have a ton of faith in this Utah team. So, I mean, yeah, you should, I would probably bet it if I get plus eight, but yeah. Um, yeah. Not something I'm particularly interested in. Yeah. So keep an eye on the market. If it keeps moving, if it gets across seven, somewhere in that range, maybe you want to buy in if you're higher on Utah, but um Sounds like Ed is more tepid on that, even if we do get some more movement in Oregon's favor. Where else do you see value across week number nine at FanDuel Sportsbook, Ed? Uh, I'm looking back at Kentucky again. I've talked about Kentucky on the show and about how I don't think they're a particularly good football team. How many times have I done that? I think three. This would be number three. because It was the Mizzou game, and then... There I was did talk the, about the Mizzou game. Georgia? Was it Georgia? Yes. I think it was the Georgia game, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, anyways, I still don't think Kentucky is particularly good. And I thought that we, you know, we wouldn't see any more value because that Georgia game was two weeks ago. And then I think Kentucky was off yeah. a week, if I'm not mistaken. But now we get another chance to bet against Kentucky because Tennessee blew that game against uh, Alabama last week. Uh, it was a pretty interesting game. You know, Tennessee's like way ahead. I turned the TV off to have dinner and then check the score later. And Alabama comes and wins by a pretty significant margin. Uh, it was aided by Joe Milton fumble that got returned for a touchdown late in that game. You know, and Tennessee was competitive in that game, had more yards, was very competitive by success rate. So I think a score of 34 to 20 kind of doesn't reflect exactly what happened in that game. And I don't think Kentucky is very good. Um, they, they, they have Ray Davis, the running back, and he is very good um, and has broken off a lot of explosive plays. But Tennessee's defense has also been really good. Uh, Tennessee's running game has been really good with, uh, with Jalen Wright, averaging 6.5 yards per carry, kind of making up for uh, a disappointing season in the pass offense with Joe Milton. You know, my numbers have Tennessee by six in this game. Uh, someone is betting Kentucky, someone pretty sharp because, uh, FanDuel is, uh, staying at three and a half. I think a lot of the other sports books, when I looked at this yesterday, were at four already. So I like Tennessee here. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll go to the wall one more time fading Kentucky. The three and a half is minus minus one ten right now at FanDuel Sportsbook on the Tennessee side of things. And yeah, the, the Georgia game, when you talked about laying the points of Georgia, they got down big early and were never close. I think that was also a 14 and a half point spread in that one. And right. then the Mizzou game, they kind of just like took control of that game, honestly. Like right. they had lead at halftime and then really played well in the second half, too. So I had both, I did follow you on both those and I've really felt super nervous about either of them. So the fact we get to do this again with Kentucky, I think, is at least somewhat enticing. I think it's great. I mean, I, I do. Someone who is also sharp out there is betting Kentucky like that. Yeah. That's a certainty. Uh, yeah. But obviously, we can all have different opinions on things. Sure. Uh, I, I think it's a team to fade. I, I don't like the quarterback, Devin Leary. He's he has not been a good quarterback either this year or last year. And uh, I'm happy to fade them. Yeah, uh, so that is Tennessee minus three and a half taking on Kentucky right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. The three and a half is minus 110. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. As mentioned earlier on, we're going to have Tom Vecchio on later today to preview Bucks and Bills. Find that in the Covering the Spread podcast feed and on FanDuel TV Plus as well to get ready for Thursday night football. Ed, uh, if people want to find all of your work, where can they find all that? Yeah, check me out at thepowerrank.com. Sign up for my free sports betting email newsletter. Uh, every Saturday, I send out five nuggets Saturday, which is my curated list of sports betting tips 
and analytics um try to put in some stuff that i originate but also what other people in the field are doing if you're looking for action on any given weekend check that out at thepowerrank.com you can find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank and find his other po- podcast by searching for the Football Analytics Show. I am on Twitter at Jim Saunas. I'm also on threads at Jim Tomorrow, Ed is back with us once again. We're talk uh, NFL week number eight. Be sure to tune back in for that as well. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 